How have you been holding up? You know, it's it's literally day by day, literally. Um, yeah, it's. Um, I, I think I mentioned this to Angelique the other day. Uh, it's the overwhelming part is how much so many people are going through. There are a lot of people going through. I mean, we're all going through something, but there are a lot of people going through really, really difficult times. Um, and so some days, uh, not feeling that I'm able to do enough is is where the pain comes in. But then, you know, other days, some just surprising stuff happens that all of a sudden makes you laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, people share, I don't know, puppy videos or something, or um, being able to get in touch with family. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm taking it day by day. How about you? Uh, we're hanging in there. I, I'm with an uh, old military friend of mine. Um, yeah. and it's good to be with somebody. I'm not by myself, but some days yeah. we're kind of just like zombies, you know, we're just kind of <laughs> walking around, <laughs> praying, you know. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. It's, it's interesting. Everyone's been joking about the, you know, the Corona bingo. Like, what are you going to hear tomorrow? Including, oh, wait, aliens exist. Great. All right. right. Tell me about some next. Um, mm -hmm. It's so surreal. It's, I mean, this script is weird, right? Who wrote this script? Yeah. <laughs> we need a lot I don't of know, some, we, some weirdo who's like, has a strange idea of what Dutch-Utopian America would look like in the <laughs> It's like a mishmash of all different movies, you know? Like, you watch, like, a whole bunch of dystopian, futuristic movies and then decided to just write one big, odd script with it. So, well, it, yeah. We are technically living in a science fiction script, right? Because right? they discovered that aliens exist, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then um, there's the... I mean, people walking around with masks and um, decontaminating before they get back into their space. I mean, we've seen that in how many sci-fi films? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's... I mean, the virus itself, it seems so, yeah, so, so, so science fiction. So I've been watching a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> I've been um, watching a lot of Alien. Um, how does it sleep. feel to watch that? Yeah. And it feels so close to home now. You know, it's the point of science fiction, I always thought, for me, science fiction was like a way to sort of separate myself, mm. a real way to separate myself from reality. But now when you watch some of the things you used to watch, you're like, well, damn, I thought uh, <laughs> I was so separated from this. And now you see how close you are right. to it. So how does it make right. you feel? I mean, it's interesting. I, I, I find new depths with it. For example, with Alien, I had to go right into Aliens after that. Um, just uh, seeing the way that Ripley deals with the situation. There's something really empowering about that. Um, and that's also why I like her as a hero heroine anyways, because she was that woman that kept, you know, warning them, you know, if we mm. break quarantine, <laughs> we right. could all die. Yeah. Um, and, and being, um, pushed aside so often with all her warnings and all of that, but even within all of that, still managing to find a way through it and to, um, uh, yeah, I mean, come out the heroine of it. Um, and I actually found I liked, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I liked Aliens more. But I think Why would that be unpopular? I thought most people liked <laughs> Aliens more. Okay, I did not know that. But I'm watching it, she has more agency. I, I mean, the, the action, all of it, I really, I mean, I really enjoyed Alien. It's a classic forever, but how do you feel watching sci-fi now? Um, well, Alien is like, Alien is like, Aliens is one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm. Um, what I find interesting, a little bit of trivia, um, I don't know if you knew this, but I'm pretty sure you did, but Ripley was originally a man? Yeah, I can, I feel like I heard that. Ripley was originally written as a male character, but at the last minute, um, Ridley Scott decided that Ripley should be a woman. And it's come up in a lot of different conversations, especially when it comes to um, writing female characters and female heroines, how 
a lot of times the good ones have started off as men and mm. then become women. Um, right. And their characters tend to be better and more nuanced because they were originally written as men who tend to have more agency um, and more um, uh, a, more of a command on the, on the story and on the right. characters. And right. the same thing sort of happened with Ripley and James Cameron, who tends to have a lot of women um, at the forefront of his film sort of expanded on uh, Ripley's story. And mm. it's what made the character as iconic as it is today. But the film, I don't know, there's Incredible. something about the film um, that I really truly love like the the director's cut have you seen the director's cut of alien or aliens aliens of aliens uh i want to say i have but the one i just recently watched was not okay there's a director's cut and i think it's i don't know it's almost three hours um hmm. and you which learn... you know i'm gonna jump, in, jump into right after right <laughs> <Same one. laughs> it's, 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 you learn more about uh, Ripley, the conversation, I believe the conversation between her and the board members are a little longer. Um, and there's some other parts that are just sort of a longer that helps us learn more about the character. What mm -hmm. may not be a popular opinion, I'm just gonna, I like three and I like resurrection. You know, you know? I mean, I'm going to have to go back because this is this has been a run of watching things that I've seen so long ago and have now, now have time to revisit. So I'm going to have to go back and watch. I was on the fence about rewatching the third one, but with your opinion on that, I think I'm going to go check it out. Um, and what I've really been enjoying is seeing the through line through a whole bunch of different science fiction films. Like, I was watching Aliens, and I'm going, oh, I just watched this element, and that whole scene there really reminded, you know, um, also seeing where it comes into Edge of Tomorrow, mm -hmm. the moment, you know, with the, the drop officers and all of that. Um, and what was the other movie? Uh, Starship Troopers, mm -hmm. which was one of my guilty pleasures. Um, but just seeing how many um, films continue the through line, how many films were influenced by, you know, all of these classics. It's, I mean, it's been fun. The, I mean, that part's been really enjoyable to be able to to check all of that out. But now I have to watch the three-hour director's cut. <laughs> you got to watch the director's cut. <laughs> you got to watch part three. You got to watch Resurrection. Um, how, do yeah, you feel about the, um, how do you feel about Prometheus and uh, Alien Covenant? Mm, okay. See, here's the thing. You know I'm a nerd. Mm -hmm. So, give me some spaceships. Give me some science fiction that's, you know, been at least somewhat well thought out. Mm -hmm. Although I do have a case to make for, you know, the science fiction where none of the science makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like the where all of a sudden an anaconda and a shark somehow <laughs> it's <a> right <laughs> i actually love those movies because my favorite part is when the actor has to describe the science of it mm -hmm. and i always want to give that person an award that they just sat there and with a straight face just told you how the science of all of this works I and mean, like the science of the dino shark <laughs> right <laughs> obviously because it's science right <laughs> Um, so, I mean, I, I enjoy just being able to, you were talking about escapism a little bit. I really enjoy being able to, to travel into that other world. And I like seeing, um, other people's, you know, um, imprints, uh, what they bring to it, what's new and interesting and how they interpret, uh, those worlds. So, I mean... Aliens so far is my favorite. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is for sure. Um, and those ones I had a really good time um, viewing as well. But Aliens is the favorite um, so far. So far. What was your, yeah. um, let's go back a little bit. What was your first foray into science fiction? Because for me, I can remember it being a film called Weird Science. Oh, and, nice. um, it used to come on like, regular tv all the time and i would just watch it and i just thought it was 
um, sort of an amazing little comedy about two teenagers who create something that they can't control. Um, now that I've, you know, I've watched it as an adult and I'm like, okay, so this is about more than just two horny te- teenagers. This is about like misogyny and like other things. Right. But, um, it was like one of my first forays into science fiction. I know, I know that answer for a lot of people's, um, uh, back to the future, but no, for me, it was weird. Right. It would be books first for me. I mean, I love Ray Bradbury. Love, love, mm-hmm. love it. At a pretty young age. Um, mm-hmm. uh, all those shorts. Uh, because in my house, I was never allowed to say I was bored. Like, no one in the house was allowed to say you were bored. They'd be like, go read the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, go learn something. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I had an uncle who was a professor, and he had just so many books and somehow I after seeing his Hans Hans Christian Andersen I uh, picked up one of his copies of Ray Bradbury I I don't even remember how I was pretty young probably to be reading it um and those shorts just got me they caught me um now on TV we we all know I'm a huge oh what I'm trying to figure out which one was the first, but I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Next Generation. Mm-hmm. Love, love, love. Uh, can't get enough of my Picard speeches. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also Quantum Leap at that time. Uh, around the same time was... It made a huge impact on me. So, gosh, there are so many. But those are the first few I remember. Oh, I wanted to ask you, did you ever watch War? Yes, I did. Yes. With Heath Ledger? Yes, with Heath, yes. Young Heath Ledger. And um, yes. also, gosh, what's her name? Vera. Um, gosh, why am I blanking on her last name? She was also Micho Black. Um, she, she, uh, um, but you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, she, I did watch so, that. He was at that too. Growing up, uh-huh. I was real. I was, I was young when it came out, so I don't remember a lot of it. But I do remember watching the whole thing and remember it getting canceled like too early. Right. Um, but it was. I remember. I can. I can only tell you what I feel, especially if I don't remember something very well. Oh. Um, because I was young, but I remember liking it. Yeah. And watching it religiously. So I did watch the show. See, I'm so yep. happy because so many people, I bring it up and they, they're just looking at me. Oh, like, what? <laughs> what are you um, talking about? Yeah. I watched Star Trek as well, but the one that I remember is Deep Space Nine. Um, mm. And that one had like a huge impact on me, especially when they would dive into like the racial politics of the future and stuff like that. Um, and all of that. But the other show uh, I used to watch a lot was Alien Nation. And um, that was that was the movie, I mean, that was a show where it was like the human cop and the alien cop, and they yeah. would go around solving, like, mysteries, um, you know, That was cases. where the whole alien population had come as refugees, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was the Gosh, movie. I'm having a hard time remembering all of it. But if we're talking aliens, V... Remember the TV miniseries where the, oh my gosh. My father used to watch V, but I don't think I ever wa- had a chance to like get into it. I know yeah. the show, and I know they tried to remake it recently. They tried yeah. to remake it twice. Um, <laughs> they did, wait, twice? Panel. How many knew about the, the one with, um, see, I'm, I'm blanking on names today, but I only knew Same. about the one. Um, I did not know they tried to make it twice. They tried to make it twice. They tried to make one on ABC. Okay. And I think that was like 20... I don't know. I, th- I think it was like 2014? Mm. Um, and then they made another for cable. Um, See, that's the one... Three years ago? That's the one you're talking about? No, that's the one I missed. I saw the one on... What was it? ABC, you said? Mm-hmm. I saw that one, but I did not know that there was one on cable. They tried to make one on um, cable, but it was called V something something. 
Um, <laughs> and I don't think that lasted more than a season. Yeah, it was it was recent. Mm. Um, I want to say 2017, 2018. So they've been trying to revamp V for a while, and people just don't. People are not into it. Um, I thought it was a sly, was, slick show um, that was kind of creepy, yeah. too, because it was like... Oh, it was very creepy. It was really... Uh, I mean, talk about shows that were dealing into... Um, well, just with the human condition, yes. It's, you know, V with aliens, but... Um, mm-hmm. I, they had so much going on. I mean, including teenage pregnancy, but things like that. It was just, it was, it was definitely a darker one. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the, I mean, I speaking of things I have to go back and rewatch. I'm gonna have to try and find that somewhere because it was a really, it was a really good one. But you were talking about alienation. Alienation is, um, I don't know. It was one of those shows that it was a procedural. It was mm. this. It was this really fictional scenario about these refugee aliens who had to acclimate into society. Um, right. And most of them were played by white actors, of course, but I understand it was like an allegory for uh, refugees and immigrants and stuff like that. Right. Um, and they went around and solved cases. And the one cop, I forgot his name, he would experience all type of all types of dis- discrimination. Uh, because he was an alien, but he had a, a whole family, and they lived in, like, this house, and it was, like, they were just, like, humans. Um, so it was a procedural show where you have these these people, um, and you have this alien and this cop dealing with human problems, um, uh, human scenarios and stuff. Um, yeah. Teaching other humans about their way of life. Um, I just remember they had the big, the big ass heads. Yeah, I remember, yeah. And um, yeah, it was. And and I remember, so I remember that. That's one of the the clearest memories of a science fiction show that I remember getting into um, early. Um, uh, I was. It was a very male heavy show. There weren't really many female protagonists. Um, but that's that's what I yeah. remember. Um, now, if we're talking about sci-fi in the eighties, um, yeah. any one, and excluding Alien because we know that that one is good. Any particular <laughs> one from the eighties that really stuck with you um, oh, that you can remember? Uh, so wait, we're talking purely sci-fi, or is it sci-fi yeah. and fantasy? We could talk. Um, we could talk sci-fi and everything and all the intersections. I know all the intersections. Okay, I'm trying to... Jeez, I'm going through the list of things that I've watched recently. Mm-hmm. Um, but 80s, 80s science fiction. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I mean, I'm thinking... I'm stuck on Alien because that's so recent in my mind. Oh, we were just watching Robocop. Um, <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Big one. Big one. It, it is. Right. Robocop 1, obviously. The first mm. one. <laughs> mm. um, and, you know, what struck me about a lot of the the sci-fi then, it was very, very gritty in a way that, um, oh, yeah, Terminator was 80, right? What was that? Yep. Night? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was both of those. I think. Yeah, there was something really gritty um, in the feel of all of that. Uh, Total Recall. I was going to talk about that. Yes. That's my shit. Okay, when we're talking 80s sci-fi, Arnold, um, okay, one of my favorite things is whenever Arnold Schwarzenegger is supposed to be just like a regular guy, you know, like the guy next door Mm -hmm. (laughs) who just happens to look like, you know, Mr. Universe, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, But there was something that just worked so beautifully in that movie with how um, I also loved all the practical effects. Right, I know right. we have, I know we have like VFX and all of that now, which is great. But sometimes there are moments um, that are just, I think, spectacular 
when you're a, when you're well, it wasn't able. They had to do it practically. Like we all remember that moment where he was going through security as that lady, and then two you weeks. Know, this, <laughs> two right? weeks. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Or you know the moment where he's pulling the thing out of his nose. Um, nose. Right. 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 Um, stuff like that. It, yes. It, some of it can uh, look a little dated to us now because we're used to things being spooked over digitally, but there is something kind of thrilling about that. Um, so, I, I mean, out of the Total Recalls, that's my, it's still my favorite. Um, and I thought... The 80s Total Recall, not the remake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love all the other parts of the remake. I love, you know... But again, there was some of that uh, uh, greediness is maybe not the word I'm looking for, but there was something visceral, uh, like you could feel the sweat and you could, you know, um, and I really went on that journey with him of who, who is he exactly? Um, so yeah, I, Total Recall, that's a, that's on my list. And Total Recall has a, a a specific way that it tells a story that I really enjoy, where you have um, this person on a journey of discovery. Like, we kind of start the movie kind of knowing what we're getting into, um, but yeah. the character doesn't know. So we, we know every The audience knows everything, but the character doesn't. And we're sort of, like, rooting for, for him. And it's just, like... One of my favorite, because it has one of my favorite fight scenes between um, Sharon Stone and uh, Rachel. That's the name of the actress. She's uh, incredible. But at the end of the. Why do we not see more of her? Because she was, I mean, just watching it again, I was so drawn to her. She was so magnetic. Her performance was incredible. Um, I wish I'd seen her in more stuff. I remember seeing her in an Outer Limits episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I haven't seen much more of her. And I just remember, like, she delivers, like, one of the, one of my favorite lines where she's like, is that your wife? And he's like, yeah, and she's like, what a bitch. And I thought that that was really, <laughs> um, really sort of empowering. And to see this woman who, uh, I believe she's a, um, a woman of color too, not Sharon Stone. Um, yeah, yeah, yes. And it was, it was just like empowering to see, um, you know, to see all of these different types, and just how they created this world of, like, aliens and people and these different things together, and they made it, the practical effects, they made it look really, really good um, for its time. It holds up pretty well, for the most part. Yes, you can see, you know, a little bit of stop motion once or (laughs) twice, Mm -hmm. but um, the story pulls you in enough that that you know that's not the only thing you're thinking about and you're not too worried about it mm-hmm. um so yeah total recall that's uh that's what i enjoy how about you how about you what are your 80s sci-fi um, outside of total recall um i was a big dune fan until recently um, yeah oh, yeah dune yeah it's it is problematic, right? When you really examine the <laughs> the story. However, I hear you. Dune was a favorite of mine. I even loved the fact that they were, you know, they spend <laughs> like the whole scene with people speaking in their minds. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't really see that much on screen anymore. Um, right. And also Sting. I mean, Sting in anything. Yeah, I mean, it's like... Like, Dune has one of the most, uh, the original Dune has one of the most attractive cast uh, mm. that, I can, that I can remember. Um, yeah. But, um, let me see, what else did I used to like? I used to, I like Robocop a lot. Um, mm. Terminator, I'm trying to think of some others. Uh, hmm. Oh, my mind is drawing well, we, a blank. But. We can go through time. I, I yeah, guess, I say, we're going to take a trip through time um but I, i'm drawing a blank on 80s stuff right now um yeah. but those are the main ones that i remember liking um uh gremlins 
is like a horror sci-fi one that I remember. Yeah, it's been a like long a time. Yeah, it's been a really long time. Wait, some uh, people are throwing out some suggestions. Uh, uh, Delay Mash says Predator. Uh, Judge Dredd. The Dredd movie didn't come out until the nineties. Yes, nineties. Yeah, um, which I did enjoy. But yeah. Said Grand um, Back to the but, Future. Um, Back to the Future. Is amazing. Back to the Future. And given, also, right. Um, yeah, in the two, uh, that's a that's a well told story. Given. Yeah. Um, and Predator, I, I was, oh my God. Okay, so I just saw The Thing recently. Um, What's that? The Thing is, oh man, it's with Kurt Russell. Oh, The and, Thing. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I see what you're saying. No, I just, I just saw The Thing. No, The Thing. Um, the people are bringing up some great suggestions, so thank you. Um, I didn't love Blade Runner. Ooh, the Fly. Oh, was the that fly me? Was disgusting. Cronenberg <laughs> stuff used to make me want to throw up. But well done. Well yes. done. I mean, it, well done. It, that stuck with me. I mean, Jeff But Goldberg. They Live is a really, really good one. They Live is one that I really love. Have you seen They Live before? They Live. With Roddy Piper and um, Keith David? I believe Keith David. Yeah. Is it the one with the glasses? No, no, no. I'm thinking yes. of something else. No, it's the one, it with, is the the one with the glasses. The glasses. Oh, okay. Put on the glasses and it says obey, consume, <laughs> and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. one of my favorites um, oh. because it's really, it was a social commentary before we knew what to call it. Um, well, and, that's the thing about science fiction, though. That's it. That's what it tends to do. In the same way, it's science fiction, fantasy, and comedy, they usually reflect back something to ourselves from our everyday lives, but through a lens that kind of gives us a distance so that we can actually look at it. Uh, mm -hmm. without feeling attacked uh, with the message. So, I mean, going back to your point, now that we're living in science fiction, mm -hmm. that that removal has kind of disappeared. But they were they were all commentary, like um, I Am Legend, the original mm -hmm. with Vincent Price, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, the, the book and the story came about really in response to the fact that suburbs were really starting to be created. Mm -hmm. And th there was a different kind of feeling about your neighbors in a suburb. Like, you don't know these people where, you know, maybe when you were in a village or in a city or whichever, everyone's close quarters, you, you probably have known them for a long time and their families and their families before them. But as mm -hmm. these new developments were happening with suburbs and Kind of wide open spaces and people moving in that you have no idea what their history is. Um, mm -hmm. It did for some cause a little bit of anxiety, like who is my neighbor? <laughs> and so right. then you have um, then you have stories like I imagine where you, you know literally all your neighbors are are these are these entities that you you know you're afraid of. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see where all these these stories come from and where they originated and what was happening in society at the time um, that uh, that created the need to to examine that particular space. Because well, um, like I Am Legend was the pretty much, I guess the crux of the story was pretty much like the world that you, as you know it, is no longer yours, mm -hmm. your world. Mm -hmm. It is a different world. It's a different world. It is a world that no longer revolves around you. Yeah. And how does, in the case of Vincent Price's version, well, how does one white man deal with that, mm. uh, with that change and how scary it is and how claustrophobic it feels? Right. Um, you know, that's always been the point of that. Um, oh. Another one uh, that I think about is Running Man, The Running Man. Mm -hmm. Um, with yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger um, and how that, you know, helped inspire a lot of different stories today, like the Maze Runner and the Hunger Games and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but how that was also like a, a social commentary on, um, well, I think it was, a, I think, so, I think I read a dissertation about how it was like the the prison industrial complex or something like that. It was something crazy that somebody had made mm -hmm. in between. Um, 
Yeah. Um, and uh, so that was one of my, that was also one of my favorites. But, you know, we have all the, you know, science fiction. When people say, you know, today that, you know, oh, you're just trying to make it this political science fiction like science fiction has always been, political. Has yeah. always been that like when you have yeah. stuff like logan's run um mm-hmm. or the you know it has always been like that um and so i i don't know where people get the idea that science fiction is, is not political but let's move on to the to the 90s what's your favorite science fiction Ooh. from the 90s 90s okay see i I have a whole list of things that are, some are just for pure pleasure. Mm-hmm. That just for me, it makes me giggle. Mm-hmm. Right? I, but sometimes I also confuse between 90s and the, you know, the 2000, uh, early 2000 era. Um, but 90s, I want to say, um, no. No, that wasn't in the nineties. I thought Starship Troopers was the nineties, but that's it really is. Cool. It is nineties. Okay, I think so wait, let me check. I um, feel like it was early two thousand, but it might have been actually. It might have been ninety, about like ninety. Ninety seven. It was ninety seven. It was ninety seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starship Troopers was, it's it's one of those movies, I'll watch it pretty much any time. It's mm-hmm. a guilty pleasure, although someone pointed out to me the other day, and now I will never forget it. I don't know how I didn't see it before, but they, they said, you know, you could also just call it Space Nazis. And I went, wait, what? Um, but I believe the book was a very, it was a very purposeful um examination of of nazism Mm -hmm. and um you know the gestapo and 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 you know if you imagine design um, right when you see all the costumes in there i mean it it hits you immediately it's not trying to be discreet about that at all no but it's also not putting it at the forefront (laughs) in you know as much as the book did Mm mm-hmm um, but I always, because I, I had a soft spot for Dizzy. I thought she was just such a great character. Um, well, I, I think she deserves so much more. Mm-hmm. Dizzy deserves. Agreed. <laughs> but, you know, it's a very, that's a very male heavy story. So I'm not yeah. surprised by that. Um, and I always say that Starship Troopers should be a part of the, uh, the war movie category. Um, mm. Uh, I know people disagree with that, but it is a war movie, even though it's against like bugs or whatever. Right? No, um, it is, and it has it has a lot of commentary. Uh, it has very uh, strong opinions about that. Um, but what I also loved, and I think the reason it was so that it worked so well, is it was also very tongue in cheek. Like it knew exactly what it was, and so down to even the little interstitials. Um, yes. You know, there's little uh, commercials in between. It was very, very smart. Um, so it made it, made it work. Um, but, yeah, looking back at it now, because I was younger then, so did not quite see it the same way. But looking back, yeah, you should see a completely different thing. It's interesting. Uh, Carrie, uh, CNH12, says... Um, the Nazi leaders went to South America, and Rico was from Buenos Aires. So that makes perfect sense. Uh, like, it wasn't trying to be discreet at all. Like, not at all. Uh, um, his, uh, let's see. Um, Kaiser Leo 83 says the book wasn't sat- satire at all. Heinlein uh, played the story super serious. Verhoeven, on the other hand, was all about sanitizing that mindset. So, so satirizing, yeah. Um, satirizing, um, sorry. Sar- satirizing no, no worries. No, no, absolutely. Um, two movies that came out the same year, ninety seven, yeah. that are uh, that I consider my favorites of the nine, or some of my favorites of the nineties, is The Fifth Element. And Fifth Element can never forget that. The Fifth Element, um, <laughs> and Event Horizon. Mm. Now, um, The Fifth Element is like, I thought it was like the peak of cinema, the peak of science fiction at the time right um because it was it was a new way even right. visually of looking oh at yes. at looking at science fiction yeah you had these 
you had these costumes that were designed by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Yeah. Um, and this crazy story, and it put Mila Jovovich on the map. Um, yeah. and, and it was also, I mean, Chris Tucker, and that, I mean, I had just before that scene, um, hi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Being a weirdo, there goes my friend. No, 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 she said, no, no. Okay. No. Are you not going to show I'm, your entire face? Hi. This is my friend, Sierra. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to the store. You want something? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right, cool. <laughs> Do you want something? No. <laughs> yeah, but thank you. <laughs> No, Fifth Element, down to the music, even. Right, like, right. I felt like there was, you know, very, um, it, it, it brought a much more diverse uh, element than many films at the time were, were bringing. And um, I just, the visuals were stunning, just stunning. And it's the kind of movie that I can turn on at any point. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't matter. I'm going to sit there and watch it. But just watching Aliens back, there were several moments that I went, oh, my goodness, did they, was that directly related? Did they take that um, from the Ripley's whole journey? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's an absolute favorite. I'm seeing quite the people here love it, too. Yeah, Chris <laughs> Tucker's performance is, like, something that, Chris Tucker and Lilo Dallas are like two characters that people still love today. Especially if you go to any convention, somebody is dressed in Ruby Rod or Lilo Dallas cosplay. Like people still love it. And it really still holds up today. I don't know how Luc Besson gave it this look, that this timeless sort of look. Um, but he really, he really went all out with yeah. this space opera. I know today a lot of people don't love it. A lot of people think it's considered not great. Um, really? Silly. silly. Um, but I don't well, know. I don't know what those people... We did, we did not see the same movie. <laughs> if that's... Just... That's what they're thinking. Um, I mean, one of my favorite moments is when they, you know, well, okay, all through they're talking about the supreme being. And I love that it never occurred to anybody that the supreme being was a woman. Mm -hmm. Like, they kept on saying he. They kept on just envisioning it that way. Now, when they regenerate her and, and uh, that soldier is, you know, playing with her from the outside, and he's like, hey, you're going to have to figure it out. And her, just seeing her clock it, and then she punches out of the, I mean, one of my favorite moments of all time. Um, as you can tell, I'm getting so excited, I can't even finish a sentence. Well, no, because, like, my one of my favorite, and I still watch the scene today, um, mm. but the Plava Laguna performance, mm. um, I still, like, listen and watch that scene. That scene taking place with the fight scene together, yes. and how that music, like, that was just, like, it was so Luc Besson, and it was so, like, I don't know. I love that. I'm getting, like, excited thinking about just the so that just, particular scene. The editing in that movie is quite wonderful. There's several moments like that where they kind of, you know, um, they intercut it in that way. And it's so effective, and it has me wondering, was that in the script originally, or did...
Vabbè. in the script originally or did they uh, was that something where they watched the movie and then they went back and said hey we need to add some um, connecting tissue here because it just uh, yes the movie is beautiful in general but that just lifts it it just elevates it to a whole other level but I, I'm seeing several people here talk about Chris Tucker and that I had only previously seen him in Friday mm. and um. So then seeing that, <laughs> I went, wow, where did this come from? Brilliant. The second film, Event Horizon, mm. is, have you seen it? It's so long ago. I don't remember that one. You got to revisit. It uh, has. Okay. Stay in power. I just watched it recently, and I was like, you know what? Wow. Like, it, it the, the, the practical effects, um, Lawrence Fishburne, just the, mm -hmm. the overall story, um, it really is relentless. It's 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 really well done. Oh uh, yeah, you, uh, you saying Event Horizon was so dark and relentless? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it didn't okay. occur to me because watching it as a teenager, you know, whatever. But it didn't occur to me that it was like this ghost ship that had been to hell already, mm. and it was bringing hell to the inhabitants. And it was mm. just like it was. It was. And it was the first time I remember since, like, watching Deep Space Nine, uh, yeah. seeing a black captain on a ship. Mm. Um, and I remember that being extremely impactful t for me to see yeah. that. Um, and it has, a, it has a really good cast. Uh, I recommend revisiting it and letting me know what you think. It's one of my favorite horror movies. And it's one of yeah. my favorite science fiction movies. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's Which, right. It was made by Paul W.S. Anderson, who made the Resident Evil movies. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do a revisit. Which was the one? And I'm, I'm so mad I can't remember the name of it. But the one with Angela Bassett. Um, Strange Days? Yes. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. so funny. I can't remember all of the movie because again that's one I've seen so long ago but speaking of seeing someone and just latching on and I just remember seeing Angela Bassett this woman Mason. Mason. Yep. Mm -hmm. and it's yeah the, like just the image of her face in space has stuck with me. Like you think about like I think about her character in the film and how it's sort of a stereotypical place for black women to be um, mm. you know, at the, at the assist, assistance of a white man who can't seem to get it together. But at the time, yeah, at the time, seeing her co-star next to uh, Ray Fiennes and Juliette mm -hmm. Lewis, who were like two of the biggest stars of the 90s at the time, yeah. was huge. Yeah. Um, and seeing those well-toned arms, um, <laughs> you know, those and... Bassett arms, man. Yeah, and that, and that oh. fight scene that she has was really uh amazing and the film is pretty much about people sharing other people's memories mm. um and there's there's this murder at the center of it and there's like it's it's a it was directed by Catherine Bigelow and I'm not I see I didn't know that yeah it's directed by Catherine Bigelow and it has um there's like some racial uh um commentary there's commentary on on sexism um, and I believe, was that about the year 2000? Yeah. I can't remember Something like what, that. what year they were celebrating, but 
it was like a futuristic take on like what happens with um it was police brutality was actually at the center of the story Mm. um so i found that to be interesting uh something that was taking place in the 90s yeah um being about you know racial um discrimination and and stuff like that so strange days is one of my favorites all right so you you know i'm not gonna sleep tonight it's just revisiting all of these back to back i know (laughs) and then um so you know to round off the nine the 90s was the matrix the matrix came out in 99 yeah and as you know it revolutionized the science fiction and the action genre changed everything Uh, um it it changed yeah it changed the very (laughs) landscape of cinema yeah with the way uh the wachowski sisters um did that yeah um and well i mean didn't didn't they even have to invent new technology to in order to create the vision that they had i mean that says something that says quite a bit they had to create something completely new and a completely different way of of filming yeah scenes and stuff like that and um i don't know if you knew but uh the matrix was inspired by ghost in the shell which had come out in 1995 Hmm. which is also one of my favorite science fiction films yeah um but the concept of loading information up into your brain and there's this other uh realm um you know in you know outside of cyberspace that exists Hmm. um and the character of trinity was like yeah. loosely based on uh, the main character of Ghost in the Shell, mm. um, and how there's a lot of parallels there. And it was one of the first times that I remember anime directly inspiring a film in Hollywood. Mm. Um, and of course, it's science fiction because in science fiction you can sort of expand. Whatever, in whatever direction you feel like expanding and it'll still make sense <laughs> um, and it'll still make sense but that was a film that that rounded off the the night the the 90s what did you think about the matrix oh my gosh i mean you know those moments where you you watch a film and it's you just have goosebumps um like you said it was like nothing i'd ever seen before yet somehow the world was so familiar it's just all of those characters, they, they made sense that um, the logic of the world, it, it was, and yes, it does bring up a lot of questions. I mean, you know, the people do talk about whether life in itself is some kind of simulation. Um, but that, that's actually an idea that comes up a lot, I think, in a lot of science fiction books and in a lot of science fiction films. And that's actually something I'd like to see explored quite a bit more. Why why we're so obsessed with that idea that we exist within a simulation. Now, mm-hmm. again, understandably, you know, we just learned aliens exist, so... <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, um, things do seem a little random. But... The, I, I mean, that journey, um, it just spoke volumes. I, I completely identified with Neo um, mm-hmm. and wanted to be Trinity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, the, the, the visuals were just so... I, I love when things take a, take a huge chance when when you try things uh without knowing whether well things that have not been tested before when you push boundaries when you when you push to create something new to try a different concept to um open up an audience's minds to to more of a world um yeah i loved it <laughs> that's the short um, answer <laughs> um the matrix was the matrix was everything like yeah. everything i loved i loved it and i still well the first one still has um still has uh, still holds up and has um yeah. that rewatch value i can't speak for the others but 
um, so definitely, definitely, definitely has that that um, that value that you can still watch it and it still holds up. Um, so now we're gonna move to the two thousands, and if you could yes. think of like two movies, two that impacted oh. you from the two thousands, which ones would it be? Well, from we're gonna go from two thousand to two thousand and ten. Oh, okay. Now I have to. You, I'm at that point now where everything from two thousand is like, yeah, that was last year. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, what was it recently? Yeah, right? Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's it's kind of hard to um, differentiate when, uh, from the, the, the 2000, 2010 space. Um, gosh, so many movies. Uh, no, that was 90s. I'm thinking more of, like, five years ago. Was it mm-hmm. five years ago? When was, when was Arrival? Was it five years now? That was in 2018. Oh, gosh. Or 2017. 2017 or 2018. See, this is what I mean. Time has shifted for me. Um, But that, for me, was one of the more recent ones Mm -hmm. that became an instant favorite. Oh, yeah. That Arrival was on my top 20 list of all-time favorite films. Period. Mm. Mm. Period. Like... I loved Arrival. It was, it made me cry. Yes. Wait, did um, you say 28 Days Later? That was a great film. Yep. 28 yeah. Days Later is one of them. Um, somebody mentioned my, Minority Report, which is like another film that I feel shaped the landscape I, of science fiction. Mm. Um, because it was the, the set design that Steven, that Steven Spielberg created on that was like... Yeah chef's kiss like even down to like <laughs> that Gap, says. even down oh, to oh, oh, like how they how they showed gap ads and like mm. clothing ads and the way they were dressed and the way malls looked and the way cars traveled everything down to that was was amazing it had this grounded feel um because it was a procedural but it had a like a a, a grounded feel that i really liked and um uh inception from 2010 oh my gosh uh, okay obviously inception uh, i know that seems like it's a movie that came out recently I but know. no it is like 10 years old huh interesting well inception is just again it's it's back to people that push the boundaries uh create something new uh mm. it's not tried and tested that yes it's a bit of a gamble but it um it it, it revolutionizes the landscape um and inception i mean down to the down to the soundtrack mm-hmm. even oh people are listing so many good ones like children of men um oh, oh, 20 men. days later pitch black is another great one that i feel like didn't get enough credit it took a lot of risk and it put uh-huh. vin diesel on the map um yeah. have you seen pitch black you got to check it out if you haven't seen it um, I, yeah, that one has been too long. Was it 2010? Oh, uh, man, no. Pitch Black came out, I think, in 2004? Um, 2004, yeah. I, I haven't revisited it since then, so I definitely need to. Oh, no, Pitch Black came out in 2000. Older, she older. Is. So, yeah. yeah. So I recommend checking that one out. But some really yeah. uh, great, um, let's see. What Just else? nine. Like, too. Yep, District yeah. Nine is another really good one. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm oh, seeing all of these. Okay. Cloverfield. I thought Cloverfield was cool. Um, I liked. I really liked the one with the cool about the raw. There's you liked movie. um cloverfield paradox really i did because i love gugu i think she's just so great i love I, her too but i i i want it better for her <laughs> i want it better for everybody including myself mm. um well have uh, you seen her in fast color though speaking of yeah i see i love fast color i think fast color is great it's brilliant. Um, Julia Hart, and, which is awesome. science fiction gugu. um yeah and that's really good like i'm seeing some other ones equilibrium was great um yeah sunshine is one that i think you might appreciate um have you seen it it's with cillian murphy yeah. and rose they Byrne. It, right huh they start to lose it they start to the sun is dying right and they have to travel to they have to travel close enough to the sun to um plant a nuclear bomb to explode the sun mm-hmm. to expand it 
um, and just yeah. stuff that they go through and just like the mental breakdown of people on board the ship is like, yeah. No piercer. Um, okay. That's, that's not even fair, Carrie. <laughs> I didn't love snow piercer. I know people are I mean, shocked. I didn't here's like the thing. It's a movie that like personally, there, there's some movies that I go, that was brilliant. I can't watch it again. Like it just, especially when he, you know, Chris Evans goes in his whole monologue. I was, I was done. I couldn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't. Um, but again, what they accomplished, I thought was pretty, pretty cool. Blow the sun up. Oh, okay, she's talking about um, sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> Blow the sun up. That's pretty much it. But like, let's we could go back to talking about Arrival because let me tell you, Arrival had changed my perspective on science fiction and i have a mm. friend who's in the comments uh kaiser leo he always talks about how what arrival does so well and what makes it stand out and why it, it took risk is that it's not a movie about it's a movie it's an alien invasion movie but it's not about mm. destruction it's about how do you talk to and create another language with an alien race right and it's important because it's like Forget about how you fight aliens. How do you talk to them? How do you talk to um, them? Right. And, and there were so many things I loved that, about that movie. I, I loved um, its exploration of what exactly courage is. Mm -hmm. um, because you would see her go and just be experiencing absolute fear um, and push through and find something within it and having more of a spine than probably any of the people that were around her thought uh, that, that than they had and definitely more than what they thought she had. Um, I also think it speaks to, for me, it seemed to speak to how women think, um, even in regards to time. I, I, identified a lot with the way that the aliens <laughs> experienced time and the way that they thought. Um, and I'm going to make a weird juxtaposition here, but I felt the same thing in watching Wonder Woman mm -hmm. and watching um, the women fight on the island. And it all has to do with circles. It has to do with 360 degrees it's not linear it's not must get from a to b um which is pretty much how i feel our world has been built uh and ways of expression have been built that it needs to fit within that um but i loved the fact that when when they were fighting the they'd be kicking one way but they're punching another way um mm. kind of I think it's the, the way that women kind of multitask in general mm. and in the way of thinking too, is you're never, at least for me, it's never just thinking about A to B. It's thinking about everything around, um, in every direction, uh, in a three dimensional way. And so that's, um, um, uh, arrival is one of those films where it's like, it's also about sacrifice too, right? Because yeah. what would you do if you knew that someone close to you was going to, you know, have to go through that yeah but you also have but in doing so you save a whole race of people and a whole race of other things beings out there um and there's also and, back to that 360 thinking because it's not just that one moment a person is not that one moment that is going to be painful they are also all those moments all those beautiful moments before that um, and I think Carrie mentioned this also about loss. Um, it just, it is such a layered film and the performance was so precise, so, so, so beautifully pieced together. Um, I totally understood the moment when, um, Forrest Whitaker's character got her, when, when he came to, you know, re recruit her to come out and, and, and do this job, I could see how much she loved language and the idea of, um, of, of, of being able to 
embark on that kind of journey. I could, I could feel the hunger. And um, not only that, but like the way, getting across the message that even the way language works can change how you think. Yes. Um, and change how your brain sort of operates. Yeah. Um, I just really love the idea of existing in a past, present, and future. Mm. Um, and that is sort of what the film sort of embodies. And Amy Adams is fantastic. I always, I will say it to the day I die, she was absolutely robbed um, of an Oscar nomination. They didn't even nominate her because, you know, the Academy and their sci-fi the sci-fi bias. I think that's going to change. It's, it, I mean, we're on the verge, right? We're, we're almost there. I mean, there's so many things that would have been award-winning. I, I, if we talk TV for a minute, Battlestar Galactica, mm -hmm. that I think now would get all the Emmys. Mm -hmm. um, because that script, the, the acting, uh, all of it was just, but yes, there's still a bit of a barrier to get over uh, with genre and uh, out in the award world. Because Star Trek Discovery is fantastic. Mm. Um, Picard. Mm. I don't know, you know, and there are people in these sci-fi and in these horror films are giving some of the best performances of the year, yeah. some of the best performances of the career, and they're being ignored. It's yeah. just very, very strange. And I mean, we haven't, I know we haven't even touched the surface of sci-fi television. And mm -hmm. we've just been talking about film. Um, yeah. 